to the Doctor Who Marathon. I'm your host, McGeedam, and today we're going to be talking about the K9 episode, The Lost Library of Unox, written by Deborah Parsons, which would be her final story for the series, and is directed by Marc de France. Uh, this story is notable for being the first time Thorn, a character that which was introduced much earlier on in the series and then took over the role of of like the main va- baddie of for that represents the the evil side of the department after Drake left uh, earlier on uh, midway through the series um, Thorn's ancestor would have been uh, is a villain in the story the Cambridge Spy. But this is the first time where Thorne himself is basically the main protagonist, uh, antagonist, sorry, for the adventure. With all, with all, with all of these canine episodes, not much is to talk about the behind the scenes and stuff or the genuine companions of the story, as that's what I usually do with this segment of the story, mainly because nobody has seen these stories. Um, but I will say this story does have a guest star, um, Catherine, uh, Kathy. Robinson, who uh, you might know played a character in the TV series um, The Lost World. If you don't, if you, I don't know if you've anyone seen that, um, where they find an island of prehistoric times and they meet like interactive dinosaurs and stuff. You know the Arthur Conan Doyle book, they turned it into a show and um, Kathy Robinson was in that. She was in an episode, she played like a weird alien character. So she's used to having like these makeups um, overall. Um, so yeah, uh, this story I actually found pretty fun and engaging. Um, it's not, you know, high art or anything, but compared to your average run of the mill uh, K9 episode, which is usually a, a not very good story, if we're going to be honest, this story actually does have uh, quite a bit of offer. Uh, right off the start, we see um, Darius and Starkey, along uh, with K9, who's hiding up on a, on a rooftop. They go into this, uh, basically this kind of like recruitment for the department. The department are taking on recruits and Thorn is basically uh, there to show them around. And right off the bat, the story does establish the uh, like the playful nature of each of our characters. Um, Starkey and Darius here, they get along. Uh, they still have this kind of rivalry that is uh, present throughout the majority of the, st- of, the, of the series. However, here they're a bit more lighter and fun to and they can laugh at each other's jokes. Um, I also like how uh, there's a scene earlier on in the episode where Thorne... He's basically like, um, right, um, uh, you will be, I will take you around the building, there will be no questions. And Starkey puts his hands up and is like, will there be questions at the end? Uh, Does this count as a question? You know, kind of winding up Thorn. And Thorn just at one point just goes, shut up, Starkey. As if like, okay, I'm not going to pretend I don't know you. I know you. Uh, You're just this, this child, you're just this annoying little brat you're not even like worth my time so so it's just do whatever you want and he takes around the the um the expedition but it turns out that starkey and darius are actually here for a specific reason they hide back um and K9 uh instructs them to go to uh thorn's office because they believe that he's keeping something a secret um secret that might be in danger dangerous to uh, uh, to life and also as well help to have the department take complete control uh, of people's freedoms. So they go into his library. Uh, Starkey goes in first and he has this camera which allows K9 to see the room and the, he realises there's, there's a piece of alien technology um, on his table. They also notice that it was quite easy trying to break into his office. There's only one guard in the corridor doing rounds and it seems quite easy to get to Thorne's office almost as if it's a trap. K9 does try to get him to bail but these characters are just like no whenever we can get an opportunity like this we are going to Thorne's office we're gonna find out what he's hiding and we're gonna take us we're gonna put a stop to him. So our characters then go into his office with Starkey going in first. 
He realizes, sees this technology, and K9 realizes what this is. It's a library card, specifically a library card from the planet Anox, um, which is of this um, high librarian species, um, these high, basically, super librarians, and aliens dedicated to the art of librarianism. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, but uh, it has these unique abilities, and one of them is by lesser life forms like humans, um, whoever looks into what's on the library card gets sucked into uh, said library card. And Starkey finds himself on a planet which is a virtual assimilation, a virtual taken of a planet that was once destroyed. Now, listen to what I just said, and if you know anything about Doctor Who, does this sound familiar to you? Characters find a planet essentially frozen within art, within like a painting, although in here it's more like a screen, and a character can go in and out of it, seemingly, um, and can kind of store stuff here. Does that sound familiar to you? That sounds like the painting of Gallifrey in Day of the Doctor. This came out two years before Day of the Doctor. That is mental. I don't know. I just... That is just uh, really strange. Also, let's talk about Mark de France uh, directing here. The one thing I usually criticise in the K9 series is that each story looks identical to one another and they all kind of blur into my mind. However, there are a few set pieces here that actually separated it from um, from other stories, from the at the start with the department and also this um, this planet, which though technically not, is technically technically in one way um, the first time that um, that the series, that any spin-off series of Doctor Who meets an alien planet. Uh, this episode was aired in 2010. Um, actually, despite it taking place later on in our marathon series, it actually aired before Sarah Jane uh, in her spin-off would go on to a different planet in the episode Death to the Doctor. So, that's really cool. And also, this uh, location that they got uh, looks exactly like um, uh, like that place that uh, the Eleventh Doctor goes in Death of the Doctor. Whether they are the same or similar, I think they named the planets in both stories and they're not the same, but you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, Darius finds the art and K9 basically tells him not to look at it and he escapes quite easily out of the department's um, building and takes the um, and takes the art to uh, Professor Griffiths, who learns about um, who asks K nine what this is. This is and K nine basically describes the planet in which this technology is built upon, and they can see Starkey looking through a mirror. Anybody who looks into the mirror that doesn't have this higher sense of being will get sucked into the art and so they have to kind of use a mirror to talk to Stark, Starkey and see Starkey in the in the art in the sort of painting itself in the picture itself and so Starkey is trapped in this um, environment whilst our characters around uh, try and solve him out um, which doesn't mean that Starkey doesn't actually get a lot to do in this story. He just kind of talks and becomes basically the damsel in distress in this story. However, he does get some really fun lines here, very fun dialogue uh, with Darius and Professor Griffiths. Um, Georgie does then appear later on in the episode around about this time. However, I don't feel she's strong enough here. She's she's literally a background character. Um, in this environment. Her mother goes to see uh, Thorn and she basically learns that he had the 
the, the lost library card of Unux. However, he didn't actually have permission from um, Lomax, the, the, the lead of the department, to use this technology. So Lomax actually demands that he bring the artifact back into the department's weapon vault. However, um, Thorne uh, doesn't have it. You know, the, the I mean, he, protagonists have it with um, Thorne basically revealing to us through one of the the cop characters, he talks to one of the cop characters that he basically set up a trap to allow uh, Starkey and Darius to go into the into a painting. However, he didn't suspect that one of them would uh, escape. Um, he basically told his men to lighten up on the security and let them through. However, he didn't realise his, his cops were dumb enough that they would let them go after taking the artefact. And Thorne comes off as this really menacing uh, presence um, for a kid's show in which he basically, with the, the cop character failing, um, uh, failing to stop them afterwards despite it being Thorne's fault for not giving them direct orders, uh, Thorne basically sends this particular robot uh, to uh, the mines for thousands upon thousands of years. I love how the cop does not care. He's just a robot, but it shows that Thorne just really knows how to hold a grudge. And right off the bat, in one episode, he does far more of setting him up as a as a much more interesting threat than his predecessor, uh, Drake. And I think, personally, I just think Thorne is a much interesting, um, a much interesting th uh, threat. So he gets in contact with uh, Griffiths, and uh, Darius and Georgie and he basically explains right I want the car back and in return um, you know I want to arrest you however seemingly out of nowhere a knock on the door arrives and it turns out that uh, a librarian from Arnox uh, just sort of appears the story doesn't give you any explanation on how she knows about the library card uh, what she's doing there and uh, she just sort of knocks on the door and K9's just like she's exactly what we need come on step right in we need your help um, which is a very it's just very strange and it is a huge criticism the story does no explanation on why this character who is a MacGuffin essentially she's the one that can kind of help our characters solve the problem um, uh, this is the character that's played by Kathy Robinson, um, and she, she just basically just walks into the story. However, I will admit, she is an absolute blast. She has this really quirky, uh, posh up, upper lip, uh, librarian attitude, and I love her interactions with, uh, Griffith, in which they have the debate where, uh, Griffith is all about the truth. Even if it means his his room, his how his home is a bit messy, whilst the librarian doesn't care about if it's true or not, uh, what's right or what's wrong. She only cares about cleaning it up. So we have these very comedic moments where one character is trying to clean it up, and uh, Griffiths is just like, no, 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 I like the mess. I like it my way. And the librarian is just like, oh, you humans are all so messy and and irritating. Uh, cleaning becomes before truth every time, without fail. And I think most of the majority of the fun of this story comes from um, just her just her sudden appearance. And she's got this really strange look where she looks like she's got like, she's got like this purple skin. And she's got like a weird like butt looking thing on her head. And she's got like spider legs coming out of her head. She's just such a weird looking character. She acts weird. She's got this really weird name. Um, uh, I'm going to butcher the name, Clim 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 something like that. Um, and all her characters like uh, joke like how her name is easily not uh, easily not able to remember properly. So they just like, oh, um, how do you do? <laughs> like they don't even bother trying to pronounce her name. And essentially we learn that um, she can see into the picture without... Uh, the need of these special glasses 
any lower life form that doesn't have these glasses will get sucked into the, the pink end. So with these funky glasses, uh, Georgie, Darius and Professor Griffith um, can look into the pink end. And when uh, Thorn goes to talk to them about uh, bringing back the pink end, Darius uh, kind of has this idea. It's like, okay, uh, we'll make an exchange. You will help us get Starkey out of the pink end. And not only will we... Oh, I'm sorry, Griffith gives up, gives the idea, sorry. And he has the idea, it's like, right, um, uh, in exchange, we'll give you a technology which will enable for you to see into the paint den, but not only that, we'll also give you a, the, a librarian as a consultant to work the technology. And Thorn is just like, okay, that's a deal, we'll meet in the sewers. Uh, it's the same set, however, here, with a much darker tone and a much more widey environment, um, it actually comes off as a really interesting look. You can see that Marc de France just really wanted to push the edge of what this show is capable of in a visual style. Not very much, it turns out, but he is trying, and I do like the fact that this story does look different to your average canine episode. So, um, there's a great moment where uh, Dark, uh, Darius and Georgie, they're in the corridors, with this technology, and Georgie is basically it's like, why didn't you bring me on the mission? Um, why didn't you let me break into the department? Uh, the Darius is just like, it was both me and Starkey's decision. We were, we knew it was dangerous. We didn't want to let you, put you in danger. Um, and Georgie kind of feels bad. Uh, and she kind of doesn't feel trusted as well. She wants to talk to Starkey using the glasses. However, Darius points out that uh, the librarian has actually turned off the glasses. Why is that? Well, they go in to look into the... Uh, they go to uh, to meet Thorn inside the sewers, and he puts on the glasses to look at the te technology, only to be him to also be sucked on into the planet. So him and Stark, he essentially stuck within this uh, image, uh, which Thorn wanted to use as a sort of prison planet, uh, sending all the prisoners, all of the the lower life of uh, of culture and society in there as essentially a way to get rid of people without need of giving them food, giving them rights, giving them um, basic maintenance. Just chuck them on this planet and let them sort out themselves. Uh, which is actually a really quite an interesting um, idea, an interesting plot. And it helps... Uh, defy his uh, his uh, psychology and his philosophy on what to do with the bad guys, despite you know him being the bad guy. It turns out that um, uh, that the technology that Thorn had uh, he, the the base for the library card he didn't actually take. So they get Georgie's mother to go to Thorn's office, and he she takes the the Plymouth that it gets hold on. So she takes it back, takes it to the librarian. She meets up with the librarian and she has this fun little interaction with her as well. And um, the librarian's trying to get use the program in to get them out, only for our characters to kind of butt heads. And Starkey just winds Thorn up and it's just a lot of fun, a lot of, uh, of just humorous moments between the two characters. And I'm really looking forward to seeing more of these characters interact with uh, each other in the future. The story does a lot to basically set up that these are the the dynamic between these two characters, and now just one loves to just wind one the other one up. Um, but you know they do have talks about the idea of of what Thorn wants to do with this planet and what to do with this technology, and Stark confronts him with it, and you know it's quite interesting in my opinion. Um, and it also leads into a comical moment where to get themselves out, because uh, they have to be so close with each other, uh, the librarian suggests that they hug each other, and Stark is just like enjoying it. He's like, come on, um, what am I going to do, bite you or something? So they hug on, and Stark is just, when they hug, Stark is just like, oh, I think you need to in, like, raw cabbage or something, you stink. Um, and they get transported out, and the day is essentially saved with um, Thorn is just like, right, you haven't seen um, the last of me and 
George's mother takes the device, brings it back to Lomax, so that um, Thorne basically keeps his job. And the librarian uh, goes back to her own uh, planet, without, but not before having a moment where she basically offers uh, Griffith to come with her. Um, and she basically implies that uh, they're a race of all females. The canine uh, explains earlier on in this episode that they're a race of all females. And, and so she offers, like, oh, come with us, there's, there's hardly any males. So essentially she was just offering him for some booty call. <laughs> and I love how Professor Griffiths is just like, you know, this, the, the offer is um, quite... It's quite tempting, but I, I can't. I, I have duties here. Um, and she's like, fair enough. And she teleports away and Griffiths is just like tidying himself up. Just like, I've still got it. As he walks back into the, um, into his house. And that is the Lost uh, Library of Unox. Overall, it's still not a brilliant episode. Um, the characters are still very weak. Um... And the plot line has some major flaws with characters just sort of appearing and uh, has a very sl more slower turn. Turn, however, the story does actually have a lot to offer. We have some great button head moments with Starkey and Thorn. Um, the comedic levels in this story are high. This is a, probably the, the most I've laughed in a canine episode so far, and. It just has this like fun, uh, bubbly feeling with it, and Kathy Robinson is fantastic as the guest star, as this strange, weird librarian character, and yeah, I just really enjoyed the story. It's nothing amazing, it's nothing too groundbreaking, but it's fun, it's entertaining. You can put this in the back and just smile at yourself as you enjoy the episode. But, you know, it, there's nothing too deep, nothing that I'd say would grip you on these characters if you weren't gripped on these characters already, which I think a lot of people would be in that category. But I'd say if you really want to watch it, watch the canine episodes, this is probably a good one to, to watch. And it is actually a great story for Thorne to be the fir his first proper story where he's the main um, antagonist for the adventure. So I'm looking forward to actually, I'm actually looking forward to more Thorne. He seems like a really fun, uh, fun character. So anyway, that's the Lost Library of Anox. So join me next time where the Doctor, Amy and Rory find themselves uh, stuck in a paradox which duplicates each character and we get not one, but two Amy Ponds. So join me next time for Space and Time. And I'll see you next time on the Doctor Who Marathon. Ta-da!